Hello, in this video, I will present EMB. EMB is a set of web and enterprise application for experimentation in automated system testing. This benchmark is currently available on GitHub. And in this repository, we have collected different kinds of web services like REST and GraphQL, for example, written in different languages like Java, Kotlin, JavaScript, and TypeScript. When we look, when we can download this repository and we can look at it, uh, like for example, with IntelliJ. The different projects are divided in different folders based on their requirements. For example, all the APIs that require Java 8 and Maven to be built are going to be under the folder JDK 8 Maven. Whereas, for example, the one that uh, requires uh, Java 11 and Gradle will be under JDK 11 and Gradle. So let's open this folder with another instance of IntelliJ. So here, in each of these high-level folders, uh, there is going to be two different kinds of folders, CS and EM. CS, or case studies are all of the different APIs grouped by their type. Like for example, all the one uh, that are using GraphQL will be under GraphQL. The one for REST will be under REST and so on. Whereas on the other end under EM, which stands for Evo Master, there are all the drivers that uh, uh, can be used to start, stop and reset those SUTs. So for example, let's consider an API like feature service. All of its code will be here. And then separately here, where it's going to be a driver to control it. Like for example, in this particular case, the feature service is a Spring Boot application. And uh, here under uh, EM, we can find, for example, a driver that has been written to control this API. Uh, these uh, drivers are used, for example, to start the application the SUT, the system under test, stop it, and reset their state. So every single API in this repository has drivers written for it. And those drivers provide a lot of different kinds of functionalities that are extended from a library. So there is going to be a library, uh, Evo Master Client Java library, which is used and all these drivers will extend in this particular case, embedded SUT controller. So in this particular case of uh, feature service, uh, how are we going to start it? It's a Spring Boot application. So here there is going to be code to be able to run that Spring Boot application with some specific configurations needed for experimentation. Like for example, here we are binding on an ephemeral port. And then this method then will also return where the API is up and running. In this particular case, localhost on a specific uh, TCP port uh, that has been chosen by the operating system, which is available. Uh, then, for example, here yeah, when it started, the spring context is saved in a variable. And how do we stop such application? We'll simply call the method stop from Spring Boot on such context. However, here there is more info that is needed to be able to run experiments on this API. Like for example, we need to know which are the packages of the business logic of the API, because there is no point, for example, in generating test cases that are trying to maximize code coverage in uh, libraries like Spring or HTTP servers uh, like Tomcat. So for example, this is specifying that we want to optimize coverage for all the classes in this package. Then uh, we also need to, uh, a way to reset the status of SUT because when we want to generate test cases, we, we want 
them to be independent from each other. So each time a new test case is evaluated, it should be on a new clean state. And this will depend from API to API. In this particular case, this API is using an H2 database. So we just used some utility from uh, Evo Master client library to clean the database after each test case execution. Plus, there are also other important information that could be needed. Like for example, uh, we need to tell a father, for example, where to find uh, the schema of this API. And so this information will be here that can be programmatically accessed with this method get problem info. Plus other kind of information as well. For example, in this particular case, what about authentication? This API doesn't use any authentication. So there is nothing that needs to be configured here. But this is a relative simple API, but there can be other more complex API. What if, for example, you need to start a database like MongoDB and not an embedded one like H2? What if you need also some authentication info? Those things can be configured here in these driver classes. So for example, let's see OCVN. In this particular case, this API uh, needs a MongoDB instance. This can be started uh, with test containers using Docker. And before we start the application, which again, in this particular case is a Spring Boot application, we just start it with Docker. And then in this particular case, this needs authentication. And so here there is some object to configure it. Plus, uh, uh, plus also all we need the configuration for the database. For example, to create in this particular case, a user with admin configurations. So all these things will be automatically handled then here when uh, the application is uh, started. Then uh, let's see what we can, how can we use these classes? Uh, these classes, it all depends on uh, the father that you want to use. In this particular case, these uh, uh, drivers were written for Evo Master and Evo Master as a way to automatically directly use this driver uh, via uh, a RESTful API, which is instantiated here in a main method. So in this particular case, let me start it. What is going to happen here is that this main method, which is available, available for every single driver class, uh, is starting an API, which allows to control all these methods remotely. And in this particular case, it's opening on uh, port 40,100. And then for example here, let's say that I want to generate the test cases. Let's say that I want to save them here. So let me copy path reference the absolute path. From the command line, I can run Evo Master. I can tell it uh, to generate the test cases in that folder. And just because this is a simple example, let's just run it for 10 seconds. So in this particular case, now Evo Master will use those drivers to start this API, generate test cases, and then reset the state of the database and then stop everything when it's completed. Now it's connecting, the API is starting here on the background. It takes some seconds. Uh, and now it's starting to generate test cases to, to FADS the API. And I say it's only going to be for 10 seconds. And now it has generated test cases. So it has generated these three different test suites. So how will the test case look like? The point is that the generated test cases will use the driver. So the driver will be available in the generated test cases because when we use it, uh, for example, here, 
to start the API directly from the generated test cases. Like for example, here in a B4, this is a JUnit file in a JUnit test suite. Before any test case is run, we actually start the SUT, the API, and we save where it's running in a variable. Then once all test cases are completed, we shut it down. And before any test case is executed, we actually make sure that the state is reset. And uh, this scaffolding here is independent from the fuzzer, from uh, Evo Master in this case. It could be it could be used by anyone. So anything, uh, any fuzzer can use this driver and generate test cases with this kind of scaffolding, uh, regardless of the fuzzer used. Because when these test cases become independent uh, and become uh, self-contained. Because let's look at, uh, for example, let's see, let's see a short test case like this one. It is making two HTTP call to the SUT, to the API, using the library rest assured. And notice here that the URL will start with base URL of SUT because uh, it's not uh, static, it's dynamic. The SUT by default is configured to bind on an ephemeral port. So let's just start it. And the point here that these things can be used for regression testing is self-contained because now uh, uh, it's compiling these generated test cases. Uh, the test case will start the SUT. Once it's started, we'll execute those two calls and then shut it down. So that is completely automated. Now let's look here. And now the test case started, everything was fine. For example, when this call was made, the API replied with the status code 201. And there was nothing in the body payload of the response. So these drivers, like this one, can be used to generate test cases that are self-contained. And the driver themselves rely on a lot of different kind of functionalities that are published in a library. So this class embedded to control is published in a library that we have put on Maven. And then each driver of these classes will be specific for each API in EMB. Like in this particular case, it's just dealing with an H2 database, but for example, this other driver or OCVN has, for example, has the need to start a MongoDB uh, database via Docker. So these things can be run directly from uh, an IDE like IntelliJ, but it is also possible uh, to build everything uh, with scripts. So for example, the script here, dist.py, uh, uh, which is in Python, will just build the entire EMB. Thank you very much.